This week, the energy is all about rebirth. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Kendra, the Divine Purpose Mentor. I am a clear, conscious channel of Christ consciousness here to help you in the ascension process. So I wanted to get this energy update out a little bit early. I'm going to take a break from social media this weekend. And I invite you all to do the same. Take a break from something in your life and allow yourself to just be reset and reborn. So what's been really coming up is we're going through this, this collective wave of, it feels like a collective dark night of the soul. And it doesn't feel like we're going to be in it for very long, but it does feel like a very, if you're looking at waves and one that dips down very low we're at the bottom of that that wave and what it's doing is it's bringing us back down to the depths of our shadows and allowing for us to re-experience it and uh, to understand what those lessons were there to teach us so the majority of us when we experience significant trauma we leave our bodies and even if we heal it cognitively somatically it's still in our bodies and so it's important that we don't you know replay those traumas to hurt ourselves and to cause because your brain doesn't know the difference between something that is happening now and something that you're recalling from a memory so it's still doing the same type of damage when we're just replaying it and we're not looking at it in order to heal it in order to see it to free it so when things are coming up for you this week, memories and such, it's important to not just push it away. It's very easy for us to feel a memory and my kitty cat just came to join me, <laughs> to feel a memory and not want to go into it because it doesn't feel very good. And just as I'm saying this, I'm getting a memory of someone telling me, Kendra, not everything is connected. Because I've always seen this, this beautiful tapestry of life, how everything weaves together. And sometimes I think I get a little overboard but maybe that's just because I've been told on several occasions that you know some things just mean nothing and that to me is insanity everything means something if it doesn't mean anything why would it exist why would it happen that makes no sense and I think that this kind of concept comes from a godless world it comes from people that come into this world and they're not they're not given a foundation of where they come from or who they truly are. And therefore, the foundation is faulty from the gate. And that leads them to just walk around aimlessly, having no idea what they are doing here. And I understand that when I talk about God, that it triggers a lot of you. Every time I've mentioned God in a title, I lose several subscribers. And that that's sad to me, but honestly, not to the point where I would ever stop with my conviction or my faith and my knowledge of who I truly am and my connection to God. And it's important that we all truly have our own foundation of what that means to us. As a spiritual teacher, I don't consider myself here to sell you a religion. I'm here to catalyze your own awakening and your own remembering of who you truly are. If we look at the current state of the world, we are also divided currently and what's been coming up for me is 
this energy within the collective of be careful what you wish for because currently the collective consciousness is looking for someone or something to blame for why 2020 hasn't felt great and when you do that during a presidential election and you blame the current president for why you don't feel great and you project all of those feelings on the inside towards that person and you elect somebody new because you feel like the grass is going to be greener on the other side just know that It's not greener on the other side. And I'm not here to tell you about politics, but I can see the underlying energy of the whole situation. And I just want to say, be careful and look at what you're projecting onto people because it doesn't belong to them. You have to take ownership and responsibility for why you feel the way you feel and not blame it on a person that did something and stop dividing yourselves. Remember that a person that loves you would never make you choose. We need to be leading our country back to oneness, not further fragmenting. Okay, so... Now that I've lost probably half the audience, let's talk about relationships. I've done several videos about how relationships are our greatest teachers, but right now in relationships, what I'm seeing is our ability to heal our uh, attachment styles. See, a relationship is a style of relating to another person, and with the way that we have been socialized into fragmentation... When we get into a relationship, we tend to put on masks. We tend to pretend to be a certain way in order to receive love. And it has to do with the way that we are raised. So the way that you went about getting that love from your primary caregivers is normally how you act out in a relationship or the way you relate, the style of relating. And so if you grew up in a really unhealthy household... And then you can't figure out why, even though you got away from that family, but you still don't have fulfilling relationships. It has to do with the style of relating, this, this programming that's like ingrained in our bones, in our bone marrow. I mean, it's been coming up for me where it's like, it's not even a conscious or subconscious reaction. It's like muscle memory. It's like programmed in my, in my muscles, in my bones of a reaction, a response towards things like, you know, physical touch or whatever the case may be. And what I'm seeing right now is that with our consciousness, we are ascending past a need to have these styles of relating. These with our, how do I put this into words? Um, with our ascension in our consciousness it allows for us to see from a higher vantage point of all of these things that we've done and accommodated our lives to this lower dimension of consciousness so for me particularly i have disorder well i was raised and i have a style of relating that is disorganized attachment Disorganized attachment is one of the most painful attachment um, styles because what I see, not just with myself, but what I see in my clients and in people just around me, is that people with disorganized attachment, they're often misdiagnosed with things like bipolar disorder, or borderline, because of the way they react and respond to other people. It's this push-pull energy of, I want you to come close, I desperately need you, but when you get close, I want you to go away, and then I'm mad at you for why you're leaving. And it's all because of this unsafety within relationships. Um, growing up with parents that were not 
they were not, hmm, you couldn't understand them. You didn't have a way to know when to go or when to stay. Everything just felt unsafe because the behavior was not predictable. And I've always looked at it like I shouldn't have any type of programming programming due to um, my relationships with males because I wasn't raised with my father. And other than my uncle, who definitely took on a more feminine role, he's a, he has a more feminine energy, not, I'm not talking about his sexuality, I'm talking about his energy. But when I actually looked at it, when I was thinking about how healthy I actually am when I'm in a relationship with a woman and where that comes from because I expected there to be a lot more issues with the way I relate to women and I realized that because my father wasn't in the picture my mother took the masculine role and my grandmother took the feminine role So my connection and my relationship with my grandmother, the feminine, was very healthy and securely attached and I always felt safe and unconditionally loved with her. But with my mother, my mother just came clean to me a few years ago about the fact that she was sorry because she realized she'd always hated me. She had me when she was very young, and she always looked at me like, there. I mean, and there's so many things that are coming up right now, because I was also looked at like I took away the love of her life, because my grandmother made her choose when I was born to either move away, move across the country, and not let me be around my father and she would help my mother raise me or she could try and figure it out and being 16 17 years old that my mom had a a good enough head on her shoulders to know that she probably wouldn't make it but my mother and father were more in love than my mother's ever experienced with anyone and the constant battle within their relationship was that everybody kept trying to pull them apart from each other because my dad was over 18 and my mom was a minor and it was just this whole like Romeo and Juliet type of situation. So when my mother made that choice to move across the country and leave my father to raise me, she always looked at me like I was the reason why she didn't have the love of her life. I was the reason why she was having to work, you know, 80, 90 hours a week and go to school while her friends were out playing. And then also being looked at like she was a disappointment to her own mother. And I can remember, you know, being with my grandmother and always being excited for when my mother would come to pick me up and, you know, having something made for her and just always wanting to please her and her coming through the door and her having, number one, her motivation and intention was to let her mom know all the things that she did that was amazing at work. And my grandmother always looking at me like, pay attention to your child, she missed you. And when my mother wouldn't, there was this shame back and forth. And my grandmother was actually living with me towards um, towards the end of her life. And we were sitting on the patio one night and she said something that my mother, when she thought back, was... Um, she was going somewhere in high school and she 
really could have made something out of her life. And I just looked at her and I realized that she had two different people in her mind. My mother, the high school student who let her down, and then my mother as an adult who she was very proud of, but never, she never married the two images. She never allowed space for my mother to be let off the hook for feeling like a failure. And so I'm giving you guys all of this background not to tell you about my life, but because when I share examples from my life, the feedback that I get is that it helps you guys see your own experience and it allows for us to have an observer's perspective on our lives because it's, you know, coming from the outside. It's coming from looking at somebody else. So this whole entire d- dynamic creates a style of relating that's disorganized. And disorganized attachment and having any type of developmental trauma is something I'm really focused on being here to help heal. And that's why I feel like I chose the life path that I did in order to learn the dysfunction on this planet, learn how to heal it within myself, and then bring forth what I've learned to the collective. And then also to have this deep spiritual connection It doesn't just come from my genetics or, you know, the fact that my grandmother was a natural born healer and then on the other side, my other grandmother is a medicine woman. So, yes, those all play a a key role and have their purpose. But if it wasn't for the life that I experienced early on and spending so much time alone and spending a lot of time observing and connecting with the universal energies, always having that deep connection and knowing why I'm here, that wouldn't have probably been as strong if I would have been really grounded and and experiencing this life through the first person perspective of having those experiences. So it's good to look at how the things that you might see as being broken pieces of yourself are your biggest gifts when you know how to shift that perspective and when that painful experience is healed and integrated you can take the exalted state of what that experience was there to teach you what that experience was there to give you connection to your gifts. I feel that when looking at the next two years, I feel like 2020 was the bulldozing down of the old and 2021 is going to be where we are taking the things that we've learned and the, the just really tuning back into ourselves. And 2022 is when we show up at the table with our our gifts in hand. And I don't mean that our gifts are something on the outside. I mean just having that awareness of who we truly are and showing up in that way. So I personally would invite you all to tune inside, find yourself, find how to Turn your pain into purpose. Integrate all the things you love. Stop doing the things you, you hate. Stop telling yourself you have to do the things that you don't have to do. Everything's a choice. Put the choice back in your hands. And use this time wisely. Allow yourself to bulldoze down the things in life that were built on a faulty foundation. Don't hold on to the tower as it's collapsing because that's when we 
get hurt the most. Allow for yourself to feel all those pain points instead of pushing things away on the outside. Understand that there's people with specific energies that are here just to trigger you. And it's not because they're a horrible person. It's because without them triggering you, you wouldn't know that there was things still hiding, wounds within you that are calling your attention to look at. And know that even if you feel afraid when these things come up, that nothing would be coming to the surface that you can't handle. This universe is here for you. And when you shift the lenses of your perception to see the world as everything is happening for you versus to you, everything in your life starts to feel different, better, safer. So on that note, I'm feeling that this message is complete. I hope this helps you guys reach out to me if you guys need anything. And I am here if you want to do one-on-one healing session or a longer intensive mentorship where I can help you bridge all these pieces together to find your purpose. You guys can reach me at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com or you guys can send me an email at info at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com. Have a good day.